<coughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take you back to the magical year of uh, 2016. Back when a single board computer cost only $9 and the next thing company was making and shipping and selling the pocket chip. Ah uh, yes, this is <laughs> this is a very brief video on the now defunct uh, Next Thing Company's pocket chip. I'd like to do a longer format video on this de debatable piece of crap in the future. It's not a piece of crap. It's it's a very poorly marketed and uh, it's a sad story. It's a sad story for a product that didn't deserve. It. I heard about the pocket chip from Make and was like, oh, I should buy that. And I never did, because I was broke. But the year is now 2021, and the, the, the company is long out of business. They went a bit out of business in like 2018. But some of the vendors, what's crazy is some of the vendors for the next thing company still had excess stock because they were shipping these units out, and they were they were planning on this being like a big thing, like they were gonna actually make money off of this. Obviously, that didn't pan out for them. I bought this brand new from one of Next Thing Company's vendors in 2021. That's insane. So, uh, a brief unboxing. I have my drink in hand, all set. Let's get to it. I really don't want this to be like an unboxing channel. But things like this, I have so much fun opening them and like experiencing it for the first time. I feel like I gotta share it in some capacity. Uh, oh, oh, this is cool. Okay, well obviously, this is the main attraction. It's still in the saran wrap. There's a link to the website that doesn't exist anymore. Pocket Chip was made possible by our awesome Kickstarter backers who didn't receive their pre-orders before the company went out of business. Oh, sweet irony. So we're gonna set this aside for a second. But uh, this was something else that this vendor had in stock, and this is a, a USB... SNES controller that has the Next Thing Company's branding on it. And it feels fine. Yeah, no, I, I quite like this thing. It's pretty nice. It, it's all dinged up though. It's like it got used but not like used. It got like beaten against something. That's weird. I guess that's the risk you run when you're buying old stock that's been in a warehouse since 2016. All right. So let's appreciate the beauty of this for a second. Oh, I didn't have my light on. This this video is going to look terrible. It, it really is a a sad story what happened to these guys. It was such a a noble venture and it had so much going for it, and so many people open fun wow. <laughs> so many people wanted this to succeed, and there are still people today trying to keep these things running and get uh, the chip computer into the hands of makers and hobbyists alike. And it's just, it's really sad that it all had to come crashing down. But, uh, that's the way of the world, and unfortunately, back in that day and age, uh, it was such a dog-eat-dog -dog world for these, uh, little computer developers and single-board computer manufacturers, I guess, is what you'd call them. And chip, the chip computer, not the pocket chip, we're talking about the chip computer. Chip computer was heralded as the Raspberry Pi killer. This was going to be the thing that really put them in their place and rev revolutionized everything because it was so much cheaper and so powerful. And that's why people still use 
chip computers today. There's a whole market around it. And it's amazing how dedicated people are even though the company crashed and burned so many years ago. I don't know if that's the logo for Lexalawful Games or Pico 8. So I, I should explain a tiny bit. The pocket chip was the video game console hybrid that Next Thing Company wanted to turn their chip computer into. So they were like, hey, pay a little extra and we'll send you this extra circuit board, all these parts, and you're gonna have a chip computer that's also a game console, basically. And people loved it. Oh, that's cool. It's all embossed into there, and you can see the little clickety keys. Give me just a second. My desk is really dirty, and I don't want to get this thing gross. So yeah, that, that's awesome. You, there's like the, the crystal looking back. It's all embossed on the front. And we should just be able to... Wow. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, this was their master scheme here. This, this little black box here, is a chip computer. The classic $9 CHIP. And it's literally just plugged into this big boy. Uh, which has a screen and a keyboard and a lithium battery built in the back. Man, I hope this is all still fully functional. Uh, because this, this thing is not, I mean, it's new, but it's not new. Ooh, I kind of like these buttons. Where's the shift? Oh, shift is down there. Oh, put your fingers in a cramp. One of the main complaints about this thing was that this keyboard is not conducive to playing Pico 8 games, which is what this was... Not that that's what it was supposed to do, but that's what it was marketed to do. It wasn't really marketed as a programmer's hub or some sort of development device. It was like, ooh, play video games on the go. This is like a modern day Game Boy for hackers. Ooh, very cyberpunk. But it didn't really turn out that way. It, it was just this kind of awkward in between that nobody knew what to do with. And even just holding it, it's a little, it's too big, but the buttons go too close to the edges. There's no ergonomic way to reach all the buttons. And the back is this weird, kind of low poly crystal thing. And it's not comfortable to hold. It's either too big or too small or too uncomfortable. And I remember when this was like being reviewed and stuff by people, they were like, yeah, why am I paying $70 when I can just buy the $9 chip and plug it into a monitor and a full-sized keyboard. Why would I pay $70 for this? Now it's 2021, nobody really cares, but the, the point still stands. So one of the ways you could play this, uh, which I find very amusing, see this little hexagonal hole? You can take a pencil, put it in there, and it becomes a Nintendo Switch. And then you take your controller, and you can plug it into the top of the chip, and there you go, you have a very awkward portable gaming device. It's not that bad. So yeah, it's cool, but you would very rarely play it this way, and you can't plug in more than one controller. Now what you could do, though, is modify it. I forgot to mention, but it's important to note that this thing is 100% open source. Everything on here is open source. So they have a pinout on the top that you could do basically whatever you wanted with, uh, plus the various ports you get at the top of the computer. So you can, theoretically, 
3D print a case for this thing, solder whatever onto there, flash a new operating system to the chip, and then have two-player compatibility with whatever games you have loaded on here. I, I don't know, now that I'm saying it, I don't know if there are Pico 8 games that are two-player. It's been a very long time since I played Pico 8 in any serious way. I paid 70 bucks for this thing and it doesn't come with a friggin' charger cable? Are you serious? Alright, whatever, we'll do this the scumbag way and use my headphone charging cord for it because it's not a USB-C, because of course it's not a USB-C. Huh? Oh, there she is. Oh, I can't believe it! Look at that. So that is the chip logo, that's not the Pico 8 logo. It's been a long time, everyone, I'm sorry. Oh, I might try to connect to the internet, uh, but I, I, even though I've, I was following this thing since its inception, basically, but in the intervening years, I've almost completely forgotten about its existence. So the, the reason why I bought this is simply because I was playing a game of Whatever happened to that Kickstarter? And I, I hadn't thought about this thing in years, and I found out that this uh, supplier was selling their excess stock, and I saw it and was like, crap, well, if not now, then when? And I bought one, even though I know nothing about programming or really about anything. I, I I don't program. Whoops! I meant to scroll. Okay, I, uh, we're in text editor or something now. How do I get back? Escape. That is not. Oh, well the touch screen works, but it is laggy as balls. Sometimes it's smooth, and sometimes you get the. Hold on, I need a stylus. Hmm. Master Sword Stylus, yes please. Oh, life is good with a stylus, I like that, alright. What kind of files do we got? Does this thing come preloaded with anything? If I was a smart man, I would be using some sort of screen capture on this. Kinda... There we go. It, it moves when it feels like. I, I don't think that's the fault of the pocket chip, I think that's the fault of me and the stylus I'm using. Uh, we don't really have anything to do here, so we're gonna go back. Music, we're not gonna do that right now, just because. Get help, I need help. Oh, look at it, there's a picture of the device you're holding in your hand. Hi! Oh, hey! Thanks for checking out Pocket Chip. Pocket Chip is a game console. See, this is the problem. This right here is the problem with all the marketing. They marketed this as a game console, but it's not a game console, and people didn't realize that till after they had already bought it. Anyway, Pocket Chip is a game console, a portable synthesizer, and a Linux field terminal. Oh, doggy. See Poculus Chip, Pocket Chip as a VR headset. Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't remember, shoot. Okay, Poculus did actually, it became a thing. You could do it. Um, you just needed a 3D printer and a lot of software, but okay, so Poculus is a thing. Pocket chip is whatever you want it to be, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we don't care, whatever. Let's go play some games. Pico 8, baby. All right, welcome to the Pico 8 tour. Navigate the tour, yes I will. Pico 8 opens in Splore mode with 100s of games to play. Oh, look at that. There's Celeste prominently featured right on the cover. Can this tripod work for me, please? Yeah, that's a cool thing. You can edit the games while you're playing them, essentially. Editing options, music, sound effects, maps, sprites, and code. Play your new game, oh baby, oh baby. Yeah, see, so this is like, it's Mario Maker rules, kind of, but you can also just build the game from the ground up, or build your own game, video games. 
Oh, look at this. Battery is very low, 5% shutdown now. Y yeah. Well, that was a short-lived test. What's interesting and what kind of sucks about this thing is there's no heat sink on the chip itself. And it gets hot. Not that it's like gonna cook itself, but it's warm. I, it's, it's warm, like very warm. Uh, worryingly warm. Not that worryingly warm, but warm enough that I uh, take note of it. It doesn't make your hands sweaty. Uh, wait, there's no speaker? What? I didn't I didn't even realize that till now. No freaking way. I can't believe it. Yeah, well there's where you'd plug your headphones in. That's so disappointing though. Oh boy. Well let's play Celeste, because I've played that before. <gasps> X or C. See this is where the problems start to come in. Oh wait, you know what? I might be a liar, they might have remapped them for this version. <gasps> they did! Oh, very nice. Alright, alright. Oh, get up there. Oh no. Okay. Here is the... Now, I, I haven't said this yet, but um... As far as the reviewers and stuff... Oh, we're concerned! The nail in the coffin for the pocket chip was the keyboard. I want to get this strawberry, so give me a second. Got him. Oh man, I forgot how fun this game was. I really, I quite enjoy the original Celeste. Oh, no! Ah. Anyway, what I've been meaning to say is that, um, as far as reviewers were concerned, the nail in the coffin for the pocket chip was the keyboard. And, uh, you can probably hear it creaking right now as I play. Oh, jeez. The buttons are exceedingly shallow. It's very difficult to perform any anything with precision. Ah! Because you're you're clicking these little membrane pads. And well it's oh it's fine for programming. Well, oh, maybe not even for programming. Ah! It's almost unbearable for playing any sort of skill-based game like Celeste. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I've beat this game before. Oh, see, uh, like right there. Right there is a perfect example. There is, there is tactile feedback when you click the buttons, but there's very little indication of where those buttons are. It's almost like playing a game on a touch screen. Ah. Oh. See, again, right there. Man, I, I, I can't even describe how this feels other than look at it. That's how the buttons look. And they're, it even says in the manual. Wait, hold on, let me, let me find it. Let me find it, because it's funny. Warning, do not peel off the clear keyboard membrane. Yeah, that's because this keyboard is like, it, it's like Atari buttons. If you've ever had an Atari joystick apart, it's like an Atari joystick without the joystick. And it does not work well. It just doesn't. Again, it, it feels fine for typing or non-critical oh oh I might have done it oh no 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 ah. oh it's great for typing or design but it is 
it makes games like these basically unplayable. And since it's being marketed as a game console, oh, you, you can't have this. You can't do it. It just, it sucks. Well, thank you for joining me for this brief look at the Next Thing Company's pocket chip. Kind of an unboxing and a stupid little demo. I'd show you the music synthesizer, but unfortunately, um, headphones are requisite because it doesn't have a speaker. Uh, anyway, this thing, whether or not you like it for uh, its functionality, its mystique, or just the the absurdity of it all, it's a charming and fascinating little device. And I am going to have a ton of fun screwing around with it because it's it's so oddball and so bizarre and it's recent. It's not like, oh, the Atari 5200 is bizarre because it's old and obsolete. No, this is modern. 2016 modern. And yet it's been completely blotted from the public mind. Anyway, I love things like this and I'm going to have a ton of fun playing with it. So, thank you for watching.